Hello and welcome to Heart of the Matter. I'm here with Yasmin. We are in Toronto at Queen's Park for the hashtag Me Too March. Welcome Yasmin. Hi. I noticed your amazing sign, We Will Not Be Silenced. I love it and how fitting for today. What made you want to come out? It made me come out as an act of solidarity um, among all my sisters and all the other folks who've experienced gender-based violence and sexual violence in all areas of life. Well, um, it's not just constrained to the media or Hollywood. Um, it's also in other parts, like in politics, but it's also our um, intimate partners. And in every other part of our lives, um, women have to grapple with um, sexual violence and gender-based violence. And we're here to take a stand and say that it's not okay and that we will not be silenced in any way at all. And we're here, we're strong, and we're here together in solidarity with all, everybody. Um, no matter what identities you come from. I love that. That is exactly, that's why I'm here as well. Um, I just think this is so important. I think we're in a time of huge change. As you say, we're all speaking up now. We're not going to be silenced. What do you think today is going to help achieve? Do you think it's going to give people a, a bit more courage to come out and, and be heard and help them heal? For sure. Um, I think a lot of times uh, we talk about gender-based violence in silos and we don't like to talk about it as a, a fact of society and is this is something because of the rape culture in our society. Um, uh, and I think today is going to be a really great conversation to have with everybody in our lives to take back what's happening here at the march and to have this on um, our a city's agenda and our national agenda as well. Um, so our politicians, our policy makers, our institutions are talking about how they can um, safeguard women and other folks who are experiencing gender-based silence. Um, I think, yeah, it's also about creating a space and saying that you're not alone and that you're never going to, you are always going to have other people to support you no matter what. Um, whenever you, I've been a lot of different protests and actions in Toronto and always you get to see people on the streets who resonate with your message, who maybe haven't heard about the march before, but when you see you walking down um, the streets, holding your signs and chanting your um, your sayings, that I, this resonates with me. This is something that in my life I've experienced or other people in my life and I do feel that people will resonate with that message and join along. I love that. Yasmin, lovely to meet you. We need people like you to, to stand up and be heard. And we are going to be heard today. So thank you. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. Lovely to meet you as well. Welcome to Me Too March Toronto. Perfect timing. <laughs> wow. I'm really excited right now. Slightly nervous, not going to lie. Um, my name is Alethea. I am one of the co-organizers for this event. We have uh, an absolutely incredible uh, group of speakers who have uh, accepted and joined us uh, here today to talk about these issues uh, and the work that they're doing surrounding these issues. And we are so grateful that they have come out to join us. So next up, we have Jill Andrew. Um, Jill is the co-founder of Body Confidence Canada, the national campaign, hashtag Sizeism Sucks, and Body Confidence Awareness Week, which advocates against size and appearance-based discrimination and harassment. Jill is also a survivor. Good afternoon, everyone. I had to check there for a second. I'm going to share a little bit of my own personal story and then just end with a very important message. A simple one that can have really powerful impact for anyone who is a survivor or anyone who shares their story. At seven years old, I was sexually molested over and over again by a family member. I lost my innocence. I lost my laughter. I lost my safety. I lost the feeling of my skin. I lost the privilege of trusting, smiling adults. I lost my love of the dark and the moving stars I would see when I would really squeeze my eyes really tightly. I would see stars moving uh, in my bed as I cuddled with my favorite stuffed toy, a cat. I lost my stomach. I lost my body. I disappeared, but something happened to me and for me the day I told my mother that saved me. 
Something happened to me the day that I told my mother. And it is the sole reason I am alive today. It is the sole reason that I can stand here in front of all of you today as an adult in my adult body, confidently sharing my truth. When I told my mother my story, she believed me. She believed me. My mother believed every single word I said. Every smell, every taste, every sight of debilitating memory I remembered, I recalled, every inch, every stitch, she believed. My mother turned to community and clinical support as tools to help me get by when the legal system let us down. She refused to let me hide in shame. She refused to let what happened to me hide within the four walls of our small apartment. My mother brought me back to life. She believed in me. She believed me. She brought the taste back to my taste buds, literally. She did not allow what happened to me to live in silence. My mother allowed me to cry, to be viscerally angry. She allowed me to yell, to scream. I learned how to sleep again. I relearned how to laugh again. I relearned how to raise my hand in class and answer questions again. I learned how not to hate my body. I learned that my sexual assault, my molestation, his rape of my body, of me, was not my fault. Friends and allies, we must believe each other. We must listen and hold space for one another. It is never our fault. It is never our fault. <laughs> Blaming victims is violence. Rationalizing violence is violence. Excusing harassment is violence. Telling me that if I wore less makeup or baggier clothes, or if I didn't smile as much, or if I walked at a certain time of night, or if I didn't play with those kids, or if I didn't go to their house. This is violence, folks. We have to come together. We have to raise our voices. We need policies to work, not just to, shit, to sit on shelves and collect dust. To the men in our lives, we need you to stand up and say, God damn it, I'm standing with you. I'm gonna take the fall. I'm gonna call my brothers to the table. I'm gonna call them out. I'm gonna stand with you because it is never your fault. It was not my fault. It didn't matter if I was naked. It is not your fault ever. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who is here Social media, it matters. But let me tell you something, standing here, seeing everyone, receiving hugs, giving hugs, sharing our stories, it reminds us of the power in numbers. We are not alone, and we will make the change that we wanna see. Thank you very much. Michelle, we are in Toronto for the Me Too, the hashtag Me Too March. Welcome. Thank you so much. Now, why, why did you come out? What brought you here today? I think it's really easy to uh, say things online and, you know, like certain posts and post certain things. I think it's a whole other 
thing to bring out people into the streets and away from the keyboards to really come together and say, you know, me too, and just to have that solidarity and support factor. That is so true. I mean, a lot of people have been saying that the online, as you say, it's easy just to get on the keyboard or your phone, but to come out and actually show your support is something else. I think it's taking that to the next level. What do you think today's going to achieve? I think today, uh, in Toronto specifically, I think it's going to give people a lot of support. I think it's going to be a surprise. Maybe even help survivors to feel less alone, less isolated, and hopefully in the future it will. People like Harvey Weinstein, people like James Toback, they won't have a platform to abuse their power and take advantage of people because they know that women and men and non-binary whoever are not afraid to speak out anymore. We're here and like we're gonna call you on it. We have that transparency. It's so true. I think we're in a time of a revolution. What do you think? I think yeah, absolutely. And I, you know. As you know, as vapid as social media can be, I think this is one of the good points for it where it's actually doing something good and it's actually encouraging people to speak up and speak out because doing it in person can be pretty scary but starting to do it online is a whole other thing and then you build that courage and it brings people out like today. And the beauty of social media and, and media in general is I mean, we've got a lot of you know broadcast networks here today from all around the world. This is shedding light on such an important issue and basic human rights and I'm just so proud to be part of this and lovely to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thanks Michelle. Yeah, no worries. Thanks so much.